This is US Africa Television, Class Magazine, and US Africa Online. Special and exclusive interview with the National Chairman of the PDP Nigeria, the Honorable Dr. Bamanga Tukor. Dr. Bamanga Tukor will speak to us on issues concerning Nigeria, concerning Africa, concerning the political contentions in his own party, the crisis his party has faced the issues about 2015 elections and whether the party will support the candidacy, the speculated candidacy of President Goodluck Jonathan to run again. Dr. Bamanga, it's a privilege to be with you this morning. Thank you very much. Today, it's a common issue of interest among Nigerians to discuss politics. And you are the epicenter of politics in Nigeria, being the chairman of the ruling party. But you also have had to tackle a number of uh, contentions and controversies. Let's get to the first important one. There are those who are saying that the president, uh, good luck, Jonathan, should run again as president. Others say he should not run. What is your position, sir? My position, he has a right to run. And for me, I can tell him, run, Jonathan, run. How has that affected uh, political cohesion and discipline in your party, the issue of 2015 and who should run or who should not run? Well, uh, you know, this is uh, democracy. Uh, the job of opposition is to oppose. The job of government is to govern. So uh, that's okay for, for them to continue opposing what they believe they should oppose. My own uh, take on this is Jonathan not doing the right thing. Jonathan is moving for peace, for unity, for balancing, you know, for preparing to give Nigeria its deficit in power, deficit in uh, infrastructure, deficit in education. That's what you need. So, it's, it's doing that. I would say, since you are doing something good, I would ask you to continue doing that. So, that is why I can say, do that and run. So, someone like uh, Governor uh, uh, Rotimi Amechi, who is alleging that his own quote unquote problem with the president and the presidency and of course the party is his claim that he has an ambition and that ambition is being punished now what's wrong with his um, interest to run to what is wrong with, with his intent interest to run? well to me i really like to quote shakespeare ambition should be made of a standard stuff Everything is on time. When his time comes, he can have his ambition. Does your Shakespearean uh, quote mean he's not qualified to run? He doesn't have the stuff to run at this time? At the moment, I think Jonathan has a better credentials because he is now on the trial and he has not failed. So, why? change the captains when we have got uh, the boat going the right way. In, in terms of um, the issue of the captain going the right way, uh, former President uh, Olusegun Obasanjo, who is also, uh, for lack of a better word, a political godfather uh, of uh, President Jonathan, and someone who held to position him, Vice Presidency, Presidency, thinks that the, sh the ship and the captain are not going in the right direction. It's judgment. My judgment as, a, as, a, as chairman of the PDP, which now General had the opportunity of now piloting as a captain, have a different view. That's all. And people are uh, free to have the different view because we are democratic. We call ourselves 
the Democratic Party of Nigeria, People's Democratic Party. The, the, both the APC, the opposition APC, and former President of Basanjo hold largely the same views in terms of their critical assessment of the President. Yeah. Well, uh, when did APC come into being? let alone to assess. I believe the, they're just being born now. And in fact, within that, the people who came in now to form the PDP, coming, some of them coming from the uh, from APC, they are coming from PDP, they are coming from CNC, they keep on changing their name, even confusing the Nigerians. I don't know how somebody will continue uh, changing a name and asking you to come to address, they, they change the name and the address. And it's very difficult for people now to know their board. In fact, uh, my own tab to them now, please adopt the what I call uh, uh, all uh, commerce party. That's your title for them now? Yes. But do you see the, the convergence of their opinion and assessment of the president aligning with that of uh, former president Odisheku Obasanjo? Does it give you any concerns? Or do you think Obasanjo will remain a member of the PDP? Oh yes. Obasanjo will remain a member of PDP, I am very sure. Because already in the PDP platform, he ruled Nigeria. For eight years, I believe that he's somebody who is well known, articulate. He would have remained in a party that for eight years he is piloting, and at the end of it, he jumped to another party. Never. So you, you don't think he could move to the APC or the, the or any of the other opposition parties? I don't think the Obas and you I know. How long have you been? Says, oh, for a long time. And I, I, I worked with him. I knew Obas and you were, was even a commissioner who works when I was in Port Authority. I know him in the Port Authority when he was the president of uh, head of state of, of our country. I worked under him as a person. It's under him that I was willing to develop Port Authority. I took it from factor one to factor five, improving the port authority infrastructure-wise by 500%. And under his own uh, administration, so I know it. But you, you see the dangers in the exchange of, uh, of sharp uh, disagreements? I call it unfortunate. That is necessary. I call it an unfortunate because uh, if it is really, there's a better way of uh, communication. Have but you spoken with them? With who? With Obasan John on these issues? No, because he has done it to me. He has listened to our president, his own colleague. And his president has responded. Thank you. Sir, let's uh, talk about uh, the, the issue of your own agenda. Uh, for your party and also for Nigeria. You talk about the three R's. Yes. Uh, what are those and why, is it why are they important? Yes, the, the three R's, I call them triple, I call it triple R. I believe we should reconcile our party. So we call it reconciliation, but without confrontation. Reformation of the attitude of people, but without a revenge. Rebuilding that party, but we base it on equity and justice. So we call it, if we do so, it has consequences. If we reconstruct this party, which is a very good party, accepted by all Nigerians, we will get peace. If we get peace, we will get security, which we are now looking for. If we get security, we will get investment, which we need. So another consequences of the triple R, I move forward to show them the environment. We need the triple E, having got 
the triple R and the consequence, we need a triple E. That is environment sustainability, educational empowerment of our people, and energy security, which I call environment, because God has given us land, water, and people. We can navigate that and achieve whatever any nation in the firmament will achieve. In, in terms of um, the direction of Nigeria, which is important, Nigeria is uh, doing uh, this centenary, 100 years of uh, the amalgamation of the North and South, and um, the consequent experiences, including uh, the war, uh, minimal utilization of uh, the economic resources of the, of the country, which you always speak about yourself about needing to own rather than being commercial agents, uh, receipt collectors for uh, international uh, companies. Yes. On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you assess Nigeria 100 years ago? Uh, I, I call it work in progress. I believe uh, over, um, over the average. Uh, I am an economist. I believe what we call like uh, uh, what, what they call the scatter diagram in a dream of statistics. You only take the line of uh, best fit. As long as this line is on the ascendancy, you're okay because there's a good, the bad, and the ugly. But once in the good that is leading, continue doing the same thing. So, in, uh, uh, the, in terms of um, your experiences, you've been involved in Nigeria, different parts of Africa, on Pan-African projects. Uh, you have sat as chairman of the African Business Roundtable. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yes. And there are personalities you have come to know. I'll need a thumbnail approach, uh, response. Two, three sentences. The first person I want to ask you about is the late Nelson Mandela. Yes. Well, it's a lesson. Here is a human being who during sojourn in this world. He cannot even go to a toilet if it is meant to be for the white, not for the black. But today, white, all and, black white and black are there. So it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good uh, understanding of human being, being committed to a cause of humanity, who being the, 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 the human aspect of a human being. We are all created equal. Like, uh, what about Martin Luther King talking about creating equal? That's what I'm saying now. Now we can see, today we are blessed having a black man in the White House. Abraham Lincoln was the person who really felt the slaves should be liberated. He cut the uh, chain to let us free. Now, in the same White House, the same man now can sleep a black man. In terms of Nigeria, uh, tell me your uh, sense of history regarding um, Ahmad Bello, the, the late Saddam of Sokoto? Very pragmatic. He, he, he understood. He says, oh, policy is balancing. Let us understand our difference so that we can now move our unity. Nabi Azakiwe. Zik of Africa, he said, show the light and the people will find the way. Educate your people so that they can show leadership by education. I mean, kind of. Fairness and being pragmatic. So it is not wealth, it is the character that matters. Uh, Ibrahim Waziri? Politics without bitterness. Shule Shoinka. The center must hold. Chinua Achebe. The greatest literary giant 
that expired, but left the trend which everywhere you go, you can see, you can touch, you can feel. And it's, it is interesting, uh, Chinua Achebe, a few minutes ago, uh, your bellman was discussing Chinua Achebe with a lot of passion. There you are. This is what I'm saying. This is a Caucasian guy. He's a Caucasian. Around 35 years old. Yes. The other final issue I want to discuss with you is your projection on Nigeria into the future with the national conference those who insist that there has to be a restructuring of the country and those who say that things have to remain largely the way they are with a little fine-tuning here and there. Where do you come in on this? I will tell Nigerians always weakness cannot challenge strength. Division is weakness. Unity is strength. Sudan can now show them a lesson. For those who, who don't quite understand it, Sudan used to be one country. It was split into north and south, and then the southerners are killing themselves. Absolutely. So, it's a lesson. What is your life's motto? Your philosophy? My philosophy? Own what you have. Own Nigeria being your own country. Be patriotic. Because by that, you will own Africa, which is yours, because you are an African. And talking into the future, discussing the your legacy, you have about 28 grandchildren, or thereabouts. And still counting. Okay. Well, what 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 <laughs> level? What kind of joy do they bring to your heart? Oh, because because it's a joy. Every time I have another one, I say, please, boys or girls, carry on, carry go, because. We are populating our continent and bring better citizens. In two minutes, tell me about your career from 1956 or then about 59. Just a thumbnail from one level to the other so that uh, the viewers of the US African television. Yes, who are I, 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 I served in the, I, I was educated. Uh, where? I think. First of all, uh, Bauchi Secondary School, um, Abadubello Institute Administration, uh, Polytechnic in uh, London, London School of Economics, uh, Pinpax University. So that is, and I worked. You trained as an economist. Yes, I was a transport economist. So then you worked where? I worked in my general port authorities where. I worked mostly from being the assistant commercial manager up to the rank of managing director of the Nigerian Port Authority. This is why I told you that I worked under the ambassador's administration, whereby from the port manager Lagos complex to managing director Nigerian Port Authority. After the port, what happened? I became the governor of the biggest state at that time. That is Gogola, which is now Adama and Talaba. And then? And then, hooked up in African Business Roundtable. I believe this, this is where I believe, uh, I belong, making sure that Africa united through integration, through trade, because we don't look anybody's territory. Is a market for the willing buyer and the willing seller and the price. Do you have any hobbies? Do you like music, soccer? Do you have any favorite artists? Oh, yes, I, I, I love music. I like to listen to music. Uh, the fellas of Bikuti always uh, excite me <laughs> with his music. So, so I like them. And, what of sports? Uh, sports. I do hockey and uh, sport. I, I like swimming, but of course you cannot work in Port Authority without swimming because you go to sometimes go on the uh, what they call the jack ladder up to the ship and you can fall into the sea. So you have to know how to swim. 
So I learn how to sing it every day. There's no facility I would like to uh, stay without having a chance to swim. to swim. Talking about swimming, uh, Dr. Bamanga Tukuru is swimming in the political ocean of Nigeria, leading the PDP. Uh, how he handles it into 2015 will be a matter of great national interest. Dr. Tukuru, Your Excellency, it's been a privilege interviewing you and interacting with you. Thank you very much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. Thank you very much.